Yo, what's up? I'm the chess guy and welcome to the video. As a streamer, one of the questions I get asked a lot is which opening do I recommend for newer players? I've given this some thought and in this video I'm gonna show, explain and teach you one of the best openings with white for newer players. It's called the Evans Gambit and let's get started. There is a secret to learning openings. I've been teaching chess for almost 20 years and I find it far more easy to learn new things if you understand them. So I want to start by giving you three ideas and motives in this opening that I need you to memorize and remember once we start looking at actual lines. The first thing I want you to know is as white, there's a lot of tactics in this opening that revolve around the F7 square. Whether that is a bishop and a queen lining up on this diagonal hitting F7, or it could also be a knight jumping from F3 to G5 creating pressure on F7. Just please remember it's all about the F7 square in the Evans Gambit. The second thing I want you to remember is that very often in this line, a good idea for white is to play bishop a3, stopping black from castling, which means that the black king will get stuck in the center and you're able to get off a great attack. The last thing I want you to remember is that very often there's a black piece on c5 or a5, or it could even be on f5, g4, it doesn't really matter. There is a hanging piece. This loose piece allows you to create tactics and threats, and very often you're able to win a piece just like that because black is unable to defend both a hanging piece, for example, on c5 and the mate on f7. Now that you know these three themes and ideas in the Evans Gambit, let's get started looking at some actual lines. The nice thing about the Evans Gambit is that it arises out of a very common opening. So white goes e4, black goes e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. This is the starting point. Here we play the so-called Gambit. We play the pawn to b4, giving it away, but in return we can get a very fast development. We can push c3 and d4, grabbing a lot of space in the center, gaining a lot of control over the board. And the pieces from white are very quickly able to get out and start attacking the black king. So it's most obvious to just take the pawn, which is also the only response we'll currently look at, because uh, the other responses mean that black goes back, and you're basically grabbing space for free, and it's very unlikely that someone will not take your pawn. So bishop b4, pawn c3, now bishop e7. Another line we'll look at later is bishop a5, but for now, we'll focus on bishop e7. Here we go, d4, pawn takes d4. And there's sort of two choices you can make here, depending on what kind of player you are. If you take back with the pawn, you can claim that you have a very nice central advantage, you have good development of your pieces, and you're very quickly able to start getting all your pieces out, creating a lot of threats. So this is enough compensation for you to just start playing the game and getting a good position. The alternative, if you want it to be a bit more direct, is you can go queen b3. In this situation, there's this tactic along the f7 square. For a human who doesn't know this, the play will be pretty difficult. The best moves are king f8 or knight a5, both of which are not very easy to find. Um, so let's have a quick look at, for example, knight a5, because I do think this is a somewhat human move. We will take a pawn with a check, the king sidesteps and king a4. So you win back the pawn on a7, you ruin the king's castling opportunities, and you can still create a lot of play in the center and castle yourself. So also here, this would be a great outcome from the opening. So let's have a look if black goes to bishop a5. We would still play pawn to d4. If takes, we castle short, not worrying about losing another pawn, because if they do take, we can go queen b3, once again creating a lot of pressure onto f7. The best move is queen e7. Um, if, for example, knight h6, we can eliminate the defender and still take on f7. Another move might be queen f6, but after e5, the queen is chased, and you cannot take this, because if you end up doing this, knight takes e5 is a blunder, because after rook e1, the knight is pinned. And a move like d6 is not going to save you, because queen a4 picks up the piece. So here we're combining a lot of these ideas that I've told you sooner. There's a hanging bishop on a5, and there's a check on a4. So now you're winning a piece, and with that, the game. So that means after e5, black needs to be already extremely careful to not take that pawn, and something like queen g6, the knight can maybe recapture the pawn, and also ideas of bishop a3 come to mind, keeping the king in, stuck in the center, and your rooks are going to be entering very soon. This is looking great for white. So instead, 
black should try to go queen e7 but now there is knight takes c3 and black should take this knight off the board because if they don't there's going to come knight to d5 with potential threats against the queen and is looking very grim so for example move like knight f6 you're going to be in a wall of trouble because knight d5 knight takes pawn takes hitting the knight knight goes back and here we play a typical move, which is bishop a3. And once again, we're combining multiple ideas. Because if the queen moves, they cannot castle. But if the pawn goes to d6, we are once again able to pick up a free hanging piece on a5. So black has a lot of issues here. Because also if the queen moves, there might be rook e1, creating a lot of threats. It might be involving sacrificing an exchange. But um, the best move according to the engine is d6. We can have a look if something like queen f6 happens. According to Stockfish, we go queen b5 because if bishop b6, the bishop no longer looks at e1 and we can check. And this is pretty much made if it wasn't for this knight to jump in, but you can snatch it off. So yeah, these are all very common ideas. And I'm telling you, this will happen in your own games. Perfect play is extremely hard for black. There's a ton of tactics. And if you just remember these three ideas with some common opening knowledge, you're able to be very successful in this opening. So although this was very brief and we didn't go very much in depth, I think you have all the tools required to play this opening successfully. And if you end up losing this opening, then you can revise the line you have played and see where things went wrong for you. But don't be afraid that you're down a pawn because you have great composition, awesome piece play, and you're always going to have tactics against the black enemy king and pieces. So good luck. And I'm very curious as to know how things are working out for you. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with some families or friends who are also looking to improve their chess. And uh, I'll be doing more of these. So hopefully see you on the next one.